Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of the Jack Swarbrick Show. On this week's show, we'll talk with the Notre Dame women's basketball player who leads the ACC in assists, Lindsey Allen. And we'll also chat with the man who is holding down the number one single slot for the Notre Dame men's tennis team for the second straight year, Quentin Monahan. But first, here are your hosts, Notre Dame graduate student and captain of the 2015 Fighting Irish football team, Joe Schmidt, and Notre Dame vice president and director of athletics, Jack Swarbrick. Gentlemen. Thanks, Jack. You know, beyond the stardom you're achieving on this show, <laughs> when, I walked, when I walked in today, I, I, I walked into your next gig. My next gig? Yeah. Bangle bouts. Bangle bouts. They're, they're, they're practicing outside our studio right now. One of my favorite and if events. Ever, if ever there was a candidate for the bangle bouts here on campus, you're freed now from the, the football prohibition against entering this event. So, so what do you say? Bangle I, I was, bouts? I was going to say, that's, that's an interesting lead-in right there. <laughs> and you're, trying to, you're trying to pin me against the wall, but no, I, I actually don't think I'm going to be able to do uh, the bangle bouts. I've got a... Uh, I've got an MRI to, uh, to let's see two days from now, and um, and I'm 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 probably going to be getting uh, some surgery on my left shoulder. So I don't think that bangle bouts is in the immediate future, um, but well, I, I think it would be it would be a blast, and I wanted to do it, but it's not going to happen. I don't think. So so just so we get some clarity here, but for your surgery, you would have done oh, the yeah. bangle bouts. And I'm still considering like if I can just put it in a sling and just kind of go one arm and just stick my head in there. It still sounds fun to me, but yeah. I don't know. I love the bangle bouts and everything that they do, um, you know, raising money for charity, um, you know, for, um, you know, for, for all the right reasons they're in their boxing. And, um, and I, I think that, you know, the guys that do it, they lead it and um, they take it re- very, very seriously. And I don't really know of a, a program like it in, in the country. Um, so I think it's incredibly unique, um, a great way for students to come together and, 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 and you know, form an even closer bond. Um, and it's it's really it's it's fascinating to watch it's guys that have never boxed before really just kind of duke it out in the ring, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I know it is for those uh, for our listeners and viewers who may not be familiar with it. It's uh, it is an amateur boxing tradition here at Notre Dame that does does raise money uh, for for the missions and um, has a has a great history and involves men and women. I was gonna say, the, the, yeah, we have b- both the sexes are in. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it's it's an incredibly in, intense competition. Doesn't matter uh, who's in the ring, and I think everybody's really trying to win. Actually, I think haven't we had a couple professional boxing careers start from from the Bengal or Baraka bouts? We have. Yeah, we, dude, we, was it? We, we, we've had one we, uh, Zivikowski, yeah. of yeah, I was course. Say, Zivikowski, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Madison Square Garden, and I know yeah. I know we've yeah. got a couple guys. That, I think Mike Lee was yeah, another one. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So great, I mean, great tradition. You know, when I was here, football players did participate in that. Sounds dangerous. And it was uh, it it created some intense rivalries within the team. Let yeah. me tell you. I was going to say I would not want to to box a couple of the the big guys on our team. Um, it just there's something about. My little, my little arms going against, you know, a Jerron Jones that just doesn't, it just doesn't bode well for, no, for me in, no, in, in, that, in boxing. That matchup in particular might not work to your advantage. I don't know. I mean, you, I've, 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 I've gone off to Jerron a couple times here, but I, I just, it doesn't look good for me in, in a boxing realm. And Troy Nicholas and I used to always have, uh, have conversations about uh, who would win in boxing. And um, I mean, I hopefully he doesn't watch the show because, yes, he would have won, but I don't know. You, you never conceded that to no, him. No, I never conceded that one to him. <laughs> Troy had a rough weekend, huh? Yeah. With, with the Cardinals. They, I, uh, they were know. no match for, for Carolina. No, I mean, and I, don't, I don't really think anybody uh, understood truly how good um, you know, the Panthers are. And I'm really looking forward to this Super Bowl. Uh, just, you know, the matchup of – you know the number one offense versus the number one defense, and and all that that kind of entails, along with, you know, Peyton Manning. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, um, I used to love watching Keekley in college. Oh my gosh. Um, sometimes not so much. <laughs> yeah, he was playing so well. But he had thirty but, tackles but, but against you, us. You could tell even then he was such a, he had such great instincts on the football field, and you've really seen that. Yeah, and and I and I really I think that this you know it's it, it sounds. Um, like maybe an exaggeration, but there's a, there's a possibility that that guy could go down as one of the greatest to ever play uh, the linebacker position, maybe one of the greatest guys to ever play defense in the NFL. And I mean, you look at his his college career, um, and I, I know that um, some of the older guys and I would joke about it, um, but he had 190 tackles, I think, in his last season at Boston College. And just to put that into perspective for for the listeners and, and the viewers, 
Jalen Smith won the Buckus Award as the best collegiate linebacker. He had 115 tackles. This guy had 190 tackles. Man. I know. And, and that was in, what, 12 games? I just – I can't even fathom – that many tackles in, in, in a season. so Of course, their offense helped. Yeah. Kept them, <laughs> kept them on the field a I was going to say, yeah, they didn't have a very productive <laughs> offense while he was there, but dang it, they had one of the most productive linebackers. What a, what a great player. I have, ever, I have ever seen, though. Uh, Tell us a little bit what's going on in your life, though, Jack. What's going on over, over in the uh, athletics department right now? Uh, you know, life, of, life of Jack for a day. Huh? How about that? Well, um, I don't know about for a day, but, but winter's always an interesting time because you get um, – you know, you get a lot of crossover. So, obviously, the winter sports are in, you know, full go mode. They're they're playing a lot. There's there's a hockey game or a women's basketball game or a men's basketball game that you can always attend. But the spring st- sports are getting really s- close to starting, and they're you know they're in practice mode, and so so those are going. And so it's a it's a time of a lot of energy and activity here on campus. Uh, you know, last night, every last week, every night, I had some event uh, to go to, and and they were all great things because they 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 involved doing something with student athletes. Like we have a steering committee here that involves student athletes. It helps us make a lot of decisions, or just watching some great competition involving our our teams. You know, all three teams. It's great to have all three teams ranked in the top twenty five in their sports. That's men amazing. men's basketball is twenty five, women's basketball is number three, and hockey uh after sweeping this week is number ten. There we go. Men's how about men's hockey, man? They're coming on what is it, twelve in a row? Right now, I think it's 13 in a row, uh, you know, without a loss. It's You're trying to make me look bad because I can't come up with that number no, right no, away? I was, no, 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 no. I'm kind of guessing here. I'm pretty sure it's it's close to 12 or 13. I had one of the hockey guys make sure I got it right. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's 13. But but they're, they're playing great hockey right now. Yeah, they are. Uh, get, getting contributions from a lot of different people. Um, especially interesting to see the freshmen emerge. And Jeff talked to us when he was on the show yeah. about about the contributions the freshmen were starting to make. And, and Mario Lucci has gotten really hot yeah. recently. He's been uh, he's really been on fire. And that's a that's you know the one dimension that hadn't quite appeared yet. And so they got a big one this weekend. They they've got BC coming in. I know. We have an interesting uh, situation where we we do the home and a, home and home with BC and in hockey you typically go somewhere and play two games as you know in a weekend but we go to BC for one and they come here for one and uh, as we uh, again when we talk to Jeff I think BC will be a little focused on this game given the way we we, we sort of say, stole that one at BC. Well, the last time for for people that might not know I think we scored three goals to come back and win four three in the last seven minutes right. of the game which is which is. Dang near unheard of in hockey. And doesn't happen. Doesn't happen much in hockey. But you know, I'm, I'm, I I love that you brought. You know, among the things we can cover here and talk, about, I love that you brought hockey back up because it, it it helps keep us on track to get you in goal for that I that know. that, ex- <laughs> that exercise we promised That's... to do in videotape of you as a goaltender. <laughs> I talked to uh, I ran into uh, like probably ten of the hockey guys at um, at breakfast on Sunday morning um, at a, at a local spot, and and uh, I approached Mario about uh, about potentially launching some shots at me. I, I saw I saw Cal too, and I, I told him that we'll get in goal and. And uh, and and see how ridiculous I look out out there. I'll just try to shimmy, maybe, and, and get in the we way. We gotta get this done for the surgery. I, gotta, <laughs> I know. I, I, was I gotta say, get on this. We got a limited amount of time here, man. No, we really do. I gotta get on this. I'm I'm, I'm glad to be reminded of it. <laughs> you know, we're talking about how well the teams are doing. Um, we're gonna have the leader of our women's basketball team on the show tonight and talk to her about that. The men have been playing so well, uh, and 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 they had a great performance after losing their leader, their floor leader, in the first two minutes of the game when Demetrius went down. Have you had? Have you ever had a hamstring issue in your in your career? Yeah. And, um, and what's it like, sort of coming back from that? So hamstring injuries are 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 really tricky. Um, I had one. Um, early on in my career, that was severe enough to pull you off the off the uh, off the floor or off the off the you know field in my case, um, and you really just gotta have to manage them um, the right way because if you, you do as much treatment as you can, but you you still have to give it time, um, and and each hamstring injury is different in in that 
each 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 injury needs different amounts of time. Um, so for 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 Demetrius, we have you know it's it's great for him in that we have an outstanding training staff that understands him and how his body works, and they're going to be smart about getting him back. But really, you just need to be you know you need to be cognizant that there, you need to build strength back, make sure that you get the entire um, injury healed before you jump back on the on the on the court because you don't want to have a repeat injury. And um, I feel that a lot of the time. Um, you know, people will tweak a hamstring in practice or they'll tweak something in the game and they'll just try to continue to play through it, and that's when they'll do even more significant damage. So uh, it's, a good, it's a good news for us that we have, you know, a, 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 an amazing training staff here um, and, and doctors that really understand the way that his body works. When he's such an explosive athlete, yeah. he's remarkably explosive, that I, you, you know, I, you're so right. You've got you to gotta get that thing really healed because the stress he puts it under, the way he plays the game is, uh, you know, you don't want it lingering all year. Now, the good news is when he went down, yeah. a Southern California freshman came in. How about Fluger? And, 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 and made a huge impact. I know. I, I thought um, this the way that the team responded um, was was phenomenal um you know i was at the game and and it was it was you know he was on the sidelines you know and he was sitting there with his with his hamstring uh messed up and it was like the team just you know was like all right you know we, we got you man like we're gonna pick you up and, and we're gonna play our butts off and and really the, you know they started the second half it was a close game and they went on a ridiculous run to just put them away and and that kind of instinct um on, on on the team right now um was just so encouraging to, to see um you know especially you know i've, I've been on teams where um, you know, you lose, you lose a leader and, 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 you know, it can kind of go both ways. So to see them be resilient, um, and to put away, you know, a, a pesky BC team that really wanted to, to show that they could play with us, uh, was, was great. It was great for, for me. Yeah. And it, it was, uh, you know, it was interesting to, you know, in that situation, you turn to Steve Vestori and you say, okay, you're, you're going to, you're not coming off the floor. You're the yeah. point guard in an, in an important ACC game. And, he was pretty flawless. Yeah, no, he was unbelievable. I mean, I just I think he's he's so underrated in that he he handles the ball so well. You know, he gets to the basket, he hits jump shots, he spots up. Um, you know, he sees the floor and he defends. It's like, what what does the guy not do? What like? And I know we we had him on. We we're like, what do we got to do to get you you know recognized? But I mean, I thought he had an incredible game. You know, you get on you hit on Fluger. Bonzi is has been on. <laughs> fire um that's what happens when you come on this show i was show. gonna say we, we just rub off on him and we yeah, just yeah. we give him a little bit of that the the jack swarbrick uh special special sauce to go to go win some games for us here so well we're uh we let's let's take a break and 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 get going with our guests as we close out i want you to know that the little money i had i did get out of equities once once i found <laughs> out the, the impact you were having in the market last week so we'll be back in a minute 